Winning a Grammy for Best New Artist is often considered one of the highest achievements for a rising star. It sets expectations that the artist will have a long and successful career. However, the so-called Best New Artist curse suggests that many winners fade into obscurity soon after, while others, despite high hopes, never live up to expectations. So, is the curse real? And the Grammy goes to... We will dive into each decade to see which artists became legends and which ones failed to sustain their early success. The first ever winner for Best New Artist was Bobby Darin in 1960, after he became successful because of his huge number one hit Mac the Knife. Then a list of weird winners followed. The Beatles are perhaps the most famous exception to the Best New Artist curse. Winning the award in 1965, they redefined music and pop culture leaving a legacy that continues to influence the music industry today. However, there were an outlier in an era where most winners failed to live up to expectations. For example, Bobby Gentry won in 1968 with her hit Ode to Billy Joe. While she enjoyed some success after that, her career faded within a decade. Similarly, Peter Nero, who won in 1961, was a successful pianist but never reached mainstream prominence beyond his early years. The 1970s saw some significant winners, but also many artists who never replicated their early success. The Carpenters, who won Best New Artist in 1971, were a notable exception. Karen and Richard Carpenter created timeless pop songs like Close To You and We Have Only Just Begun. Their clean-cut image and soft pop sound dominated the charts in the early 1970s. However, in the decade, several winners failed to live up to their Grammy win. Artists like Starland Vocal Band and the Taste of Honey may have had one or two hits, but they quickly faded from the music scene. They became one-hit wonders, struggling to maintain relevance in a fast-evolving music landscape. There were also weird winners like the composer Marvin Hamlish. The 1980s decade was decent. Sade, who won in 1986, defied the Grammy curse and went on to become a global icon. Known for her smooth, sultry voice and elegant style, her blend of soul, jazz and R&B found long-term success, with albums like Diamond Life and Promise defining her genre. However, many other winners from this decade struggled after their initial success. Men at Work, who won in 1983, had huge hits like Down Under, but failed to maintain their momentum after their second album. Similarly, artists like Christopher Cross, who won in 1981, fell into irrelevance despite initial success. The 1989 winner Tracy Chapman has become a legend as she has managed to stay relevant thanks to her timeless classic Fast Car being covered again and again. She also had other hits and is still a respected artist. The 1990s started off with one of the most notorious Grammy Best New Artist scandals when Milli Vanilli won in 1990. The German-French duo enjoyed massive success with hits like Girl You Know Is True, but their career imploded when it was revealed that they had lip-synced their entire album. The Grammy was taken away from them and they would forever be known as a joke. That is the first and only time that has ever happened in Grammy history. On the flip side, Mariah Carey, who won in 1991, defied any notion of a curse. Her career skyrocketed after the Grammy, with hits like Hero and Fantasy, making her one of the best-selling artists of all time. She has now cemented herself as a true legend, overcoming the supposed curse. The next years gave us winners that didn't really make a long-lasting impact. I mean, Toni Braxton had her moment. The 1999 Best New Artist Grammy went to Lauryn Hill after her groundbreaking solo debut the miseducation of Lauren Hill. She had the talent to avoid the curse, but after the win, her career became overshadowed by personal and legal issues. She still has not released a studio album since. You can say somewhat she got the curse. The 2000s saw a mix of artists who either thrived or struggled after winning the Best New Artist Award. Christina Aguilera, who won in 2000, has had a long and successful career, transitioning from a pop princess to a more mature artist, cementing her legacy. The curse did not apply to her. Alicia Keys, the 2002 winner, also enjoyed enduring success. Known for her soulful voice and piano skills, she released multiple hits 
well into the late 2000s. Her career has included multiple Grammys and she remains a legend in R&B. 2003 winner Nora Jones and 2004 winners Evanescence had decent careers after becoming Best New Artists. 2005 winners Maroon 5, 2006 winner John Legend and 2007 winner Carrie Underwood have all had great careers. Amy Winehouse, who won in 2008, was another immensely talented artist who sadly couldn't escape her personal demons. Despite winning global acclaim for her album Back to Black and hits like Rehab, her struggle with addiction led to her untimely death in 2011. Back to Black was her last album and she was working on a new album when she died. She didn't live out her career to determine if she got the curse or not. Adele, the 2009 winner, is the most shining example of defying the curse. After winning Best New Artist, she went on to release record-breaking albums like 21 and 25, becoming one of the most successful and critically acclaimed artists of her generation. The 2010s were marked by both surprises and disappointments. Esperanza Spalding's win in 2011 shocked many as she was the first jazz-only artist to take home the award. The wild part about that was she won over upcoming stars like Drake and Justin Bieber. While her career continued in jazz circles, she did not reach mainstream success. Fun, who won in 2013, had a brief period of massive success with hits like We Are Young but disbanded soon after, with the members pursuing solo projects. You know, like Jack Antonoff becoming one of the biggest producers of all time. Macklemore and Ryan Lewis, who won in 2014, also experienced a sharp decline in popularity after their debut album The Heist and failed to maintain cultural relevance. They also broke up in 2017. The next winners, Sam Smith and Megan Trainor, have gone on to have good careers after their wins. Chance the Rapper, who won in 2017, seemed poised to dominate the music world when he released his successful mixtape Coloring Book, with many backing him as the next hip-hop superstar. But his debut album The Big Day received bad reviews and effectively killed his career. He hasn't recovered since. In contrast, Dua Lipa, who won in 2019, has maintained her momentum. Her 2020 album Future Nostalgia was a major success and helped her become a global pop star, winning multiple awards and building a large fan base. Her follow-up Radical Optimism was released in 2024 and did not perform as well on the charts. She is still a huge star, but her trajectory has dipped a little. In the 2020s, the Grammy Best New Artist Award has been given to some of the most exciting voices in modern music. Billie Eilish, who won in 2020, has continued to defy the odds. Her debut album When We All Fall Asleep Where Do We Go broke records, and her follow-up Happier Than Ever solidified her as one of the most important artists of her generation. Her new album Hit Me Hard and Soft continued her momentum and ensured that there would be no fall-offs. Megan Thee Stallion, who won in 2021, has also sustained her success. Her album good news and singles like Savage and Body made her a household name and she has since became a key figure in female rap. Olivia Rodrigo, who won in 2022, has had a meteoric rise with her debut album Sour. Songs like Driver's License and Good For You became cultural phenomena, and her follow-up Guts continued her momentum and showed that she is not a one-album wonder. For recent winners like Samara Joy and Victoria Monet, it is too soon to tell how their career will pan out. Looking at the history of the Grammy Best New Artist Award, it is clear while some winners have fallen prey to the curse, others have gone on to achieve incredible success. The award can be both a blessing and a curse, depending on the artist's ability to navigate the pressures that come with the award. By my calculation, only 36% of artists who won the Grammy for Best New Artist have been affected by the so-called curse. But looking at the data, we can conclude that the Best New Artist curse is not much of a factor. What do you think? Tell me in the comments below.